Yeah, you know, it's um, and I've talked about this before on on this show in terms of my experience with live rock versus um, dry rock. I, I had um, one tank that I started with dry rock that was just, I just had um, I had a lot of trouble with it. I had dinos, I had uh, bacterial bloom, and I probably went through it um, <laughs> too quick in terms of the um, that process, and um, probably didn't use enough in terms of the bacterial boosting type of products that um, I needed. Yeah. I mean, is that something that you just really have to um, it's part of it. So what, what you have to understand when you're starting with dry rock and you're putting it in a reef tank that you've put so many watts per gallon of light, you know, you're really heavily illuminating it. And there's no other things growing on that bare calcium carbonate substrate. Uh, diatoms and dinoflagellates and cyanobacteria are going to say, yay, good, I've got, a, you know, I've got territory. And it, there's a succession. And the way you get over that is by really pushing the calcium and alkalinity, you know, to super saturation and maintaining a really decent number of herbivores. Um, there are other methods of managing dinoflagellates, for example, you know, using ultraviolet sterilizers to reduce their free swimming populations. Um, you know, sometimes the dinoflagellates get in there and the herbivores can't you know, eat any other algae because the dinoflagellates are toxic and they're mixed in with the other algae. Um, we all get these headaches at some point in, in reef keeping and a new aquarium uh, has a higher incidence of problem algae like that. Bare dry live rock is by definition like a new aquarium. So, you know, if you have a good amount of corals to put on the rock, uh, that helps. Um, having the herbivores from day one helps and uh, maintaining the saturation state of calcium carbonate helps because then the corallines will grow and that once they're on the rocks, you, you won't have any issues with the dinoflagellates. Yeah, dinos yeah. is... Um... That, that's a tough one. I mean, and you mentioned UV sterilizer. So is, you know, in terms yeah. of what um, I understand, using a UV at night while the dinos are in, in the water column can be effective yeah. as well as uh, raising nutrients. Is that um, something you found? To, to yeah, have? there's there's a lot of anecdotal um, information that you can find on the web of everybody, you know, with a dinoflagellate problem trying this or that. Uh, the... Uh, the issue about nutrients, I think, you know, some people have considered a dinoflagellate issue to be maybe related to the red field ratio, you know, how much nitrogen, phosphorus, and organic matter. Um, what's true is if you change the ratio, sometimes uh, a photosynthetic organism like a dinoflagellate will react negatively and you'll think you've achieved um, you know, success, but sometimes they come back, they can adapt. Um, in my experience, the main issue with dinoflagellate blooms is a, a disturbance in the aquarium, whether it's uh, an old tank where you uh, vacuumed the whole bottom, really disturb that uh, stable uh, biological bed, uh, or, you know, uh, an organism dying like a leather coral dying you know, creating a big nutrient pulse, then afterwards you may see uh, a dinoflagellate bloom until it achieves a new stable state. Um, it is a frustrating problem, and there, there isn't a very simple bullet answer to it um, other than, you know, trying to get your tank back to stability, uh, which uh, often takes uh, time rather than actively doing something like water changes and vacuuming. It's better to just kind of let it be. Julian, in, in terms of fighting problematic algae, what are your thoughts on using chemicals like ChemiClean or fluconazole for bryopsis? What are your thoughts on that sort of thing? Well, um, I know from all the years that um, ChemiClean has been out on the market, there, you know, there are a lot of hobbyists that have depended on that for dealing with red cyanobacteria. Um, I have not personally used it. I mean, I've had red cyanobacteria in my aquariums as anyone who's had a reef aquarium has at some point. Um, I've gone my own way of, of dealing with it through control of nutrients, but 
people who have aquarium maintenance businesses and they've got a you know several hundred gallon system full of fish and it turns into a red slime ball they want a quick bullet to solve it so there's always going to be a place for that you know where the client says hey my tank looks terrible quick treat it boom it's just like uh the uh, pool guy you know <laughs> he's got to make sure the pool looks nice and spotless and clean it's it, so there's a place for it um, in my own reef aquariums, uh, you know, I, I deal with different types of algae, usually in a, in a different way, whether it's increasing the water flow where it's needed, um, you know, using uh, filter media like a GFO to take the phosphate level down or activating carbon. Um, when it comes to a, a product like uh, fluconazole, which is, you know, a whole other subject, uh, bryopsis. Uh, is uh, you know an alga that that makes people crazy. It's it's um, very very adaptable to all kinds of water quality conditions and does not um, rapidly disappear when you get the nutrient levels to nothing. Uh, so that that was I think a pretty major breakthrough that people discovered this antifungal um, strongly influences the the life of of bryopsis. Um, I have not used it, but I, I've seen enough feedback online from people uh, using it that that does seem to be a, um, uh, a treatment that's, that's recommended uh, and reproducible success. When I've had bryopsis uh, appear uh, in my aquariums, it's typically only in certain spots. Um, it might appear on a, a branch of coral where the tissue is receded and you get a bloom of bryopsis. I normally would just snap that off as soon as I notice it so it doesn't spread. Um, another place you commonly will find bryopsis is in the grill of an overflow mm -hmm. or any suction intake if it's illuminated where there's a bright light. If I've seen that happen, I take those off and scrub them in fresh water and make sure that it, it's absolutely killed um, then then replace that so uh, I I've rarely had any uh, blooms of bryopsis that got beyond those um, you know initial little spots the only exception to that would be my pond um, I have a saltwater pond and the video that didn't un upload I think was the pond video um, in its first year or so there was uh, a period of time where the nutrient levels were higher and bryopsis got started and it did take over. The whole pond became a bryopsis wow. hairball for several months. And my wife said, I thought you said that this was going to be easy to take care of. And I <laughs> said to her, well, it, it will be. And she said, when? And I said, well, um, you'll see that this, this bryopsis will go away um, well, how soon? I said, well, I don't know. <laughs> I said, but it will, which it did. Um, it, 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 uh, I didn't, I could have gotten the fluconazole, but I, I didn't. Um, I, uh, I put in herbivores, several urchins. They really didn't touch it much. Um, but the nutrient levels came down. Uh, I got in there and pulled it out because, you know, when bryopsis is growing really well, it just, it grows. Um, so I pulled it out and my wife was saying, you're going to keep doing that. And I said, yes, yes, don't worry, go away. And it, and it did. Um, it probably was a few months uh, where, you know, I wasn't proud of how the tank looked. But um, all of a sudden there was less and then less. And now, you, you know, you won't find any. There's none. Um, but that pond is not a reef tank. Um, there are some corals in it. Uh, the bryopsis was growing actually on the liner, on the walls, all the way around in the pond. Um, and it spread onto a couple of gorgonians that were there. Uh, but there's not really much in the way of rock in this pond. Um, there's a mangrove, there's sand. Um, and so it was relatively easy to manage. Uh, it was just a matter of time for it to stop growing on the, uh, the walls on the liner. And it, it did. Um, yeah, I um, a, a while ago I had some bryopsis in a uh, in a frag tank, and so you know after a while of of trying to like pluck it and pull it, I, I think what I did was I just released more spores by doing that. 
and, and it got to yeah. be a real infestation. So I, I hit it, I hit it up with fluconazole and it, um, and it wiped it out, but okay. it, you know what? It came back like in three or four months and yeah. I don't know how, um, careful you have to be in terms of making sure, you know, the certain pieces of equipment on, on the, uh, on the tank are properly, I don't mm. know what the word would be sterilized or what have you, um, sanitized to make sure that there's no spores that were left over. I, I don't think you can. I think every single reef aquarium has bryopsis and that realization, recognition that every single reef aquarium has it, but it's a problem only sometimes in some aquariums. Just, you know, can give you, you know, a peace of mind that you can beat it. It will, it will eventually go away. The fact that fluconazole is now available as a treatment, I think is a, you know, is a terrific blessing. Um, so, you know, when it's out of hand and potentially harming corals, that's when you need to, you know, actively do something about it. Right. But you're never going to get it out of the aquarium. I, you know, in my reef aquariums here, I occasionally see a little patch. And when I do, I, you know, if it's on the glass, I scrape it off, turn the water flow off, scrape it off, suck that little bit out. Uh, if it's on a coral where there's a, a dead spot, I break it off and it never gets beyond that. That's, that's how I, uh, eventually beat this. And I'm, I'm knocking on wood right now on my, uh, probably fake yeah. wood desk or whatever it's made out of. But, um, right. that's how I've, uh, beaten it since it came back from the fluconazole was I was doing what you're talking about. I was breaking off. If it was grown on a, um, a branch of a coral or something like that, or a base of a plug. I'd snip the yeah. coral off the plug and get the plug out of there. If it was on the A crate, I'd get the A crate out of there. I was very careful right. not to, rip and shred it and let other spores potentially get into the, uh, into the water. And so yeah. if, if you can remove it yes. cleanly and get to those nutrients under control, I've found that to be, um, you know, so yeah. far an effective way to, to get rid of it. Once in a while you get lucky with, uh, I mean, if the aquarium's big enough with a rabbit fish, any of that group, uh, Saganid fishes, uh, once in a while you get one that'll eat it mm. and then, you're home free. <laughs> yeah. um, so, Julian, you mentioned uh, GFO as a way to get down phosphates that you sometimes use yeah. that. Um, so, can GFO not only bind phosphate, phosphate but other valuable trace elements as well? Do you have to be careful with the amount of GFO you use for that reason, or is that not really something you can no. be concerned about? Um, it, it does absorb uh, some metals, and a lot of people consider that to be a, a benefit of it. Um, so yeah, in theory, it can be reducing some trace metals down. Uh, but I, the, the main concern with use of it is the effect on alkalinity as it pulls phosphate. It also reduces alkalinity in the aquarium. Most of us who are growing corals, um, you know, are already supplementing to boost alkalinity. So, um, then you can just think of your GFO filter is like another coral. <laughs> it's, uh, it's something that is another sink for alkalinity. Um, that, that's all, the only main concern. What about hydrogen peroxide for treatment of algae? Is that just a Band-Aid? Um, yeah, in a, in a way, uh, there, there's two camps on this. There, there's the um, treat the frag plug you know, method where you're spot injecting hydrogen peroxide right on the algae itself. And um, I know that uh, Justin Grable, you know, just incredible, has done some experimentation with actual dosing in the aquarium. Um, I've always been afraid to promote that idea because each aquarium has a different um, organic load. And uh, he, I think he had devised some what he considered very safe uh, range of how much you could add uh, for the benefit of, of curbing algae growth. Um, and he may have published that. You might want to take a look for something he may have written uh, that might be published online.